Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into my channel. Today we're getting ready to pour a house and garage. Before I get right into the video, I just wanted to honor the second concrete driver on this job. He had a pet that recently passed away, and I really wanted to show you guys, you know, how he honored his dog and how he'll have a memory of him for the rest of his life. So, if you don't mind, please check this out right here. Hey everybody, here's Matt, the super driver. He just got a new tattoo. This was his dog that passed away about seven months ago, Doc Holiday. So we just wanted to, to show you guys that and show, you, show him some love in the comments and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, Mike. All right, so back to the pour here. We got the house part we're doing right here. This is actually a small house and garage that's on a lake and the owner's going to turn this into a rental. It, there used to be a like a smaller cabin here. They had that all demoed and removed and they put in the new concrete foundation and then we're actually working for the foundation contractor so this is one of our normal contractors we do a lot of floors for every year so right the upper part there is actually going to be the house part the lower part is the garage we're matching the top of the wall for most of it and then they got radiant heat in here too they're going to heat the whole house by by heating the concrete floors and we call that radiant heat we do a bunch of that in maine probably at least half the floors that we pour have this radiant heat in them and they put th this job particular job had three inches of styrofoam put underneath it because that's the code for this town but most of the jobs we do have two inches of styrofoam underneath them just to help insulate the floor and keep the heat from going down into the ground so Darren and Luke are, are getting the concrete kind of spread out I'm over there, I'm magging the edges and I'm shooting some pads with the laser. They actually put a piece of styrofoam, a four inch piece by one inch thick up on the edge on this to help keep any of the heat from going out through the side of the concrete. But when they put that up, they didn't really fasten it to anything. They just used a little duct tape. So it didn't hold at all. So we're kind of having to hold that in place as we're pouring which means we couldn't really snap a chalk line on the wall, which is what we normally do. So I'm wet padding, what I call wet padding, everything on the outside, making sure everything's right to grade, and also making sure that styrofoam gets in place where they need it. We got a 3500 PSI mix, and if for you guys that watch a lot of my videos, you know we always use a, a mid-range water reducer in the mix, which allows us to pour a little bit looser slump than normal without affecting the water cement ratio which which doesn't really affect the strength it actually is stronger usually a little stronger concrete than pouring concrete at this slump uh, without mid-range water reducer so the water reducer is basically a chemical they add it's about they add about 15 ounces of it per yard of concrete and it takes it takes like you know three to four inch slump concrete and can make it into you know a six to seven inch slump concrete so just makes it a little bit easier to put the concrete down get it in place get it screeded and without having to kill yourself so we use that stuff every single day a lot of people say we pour wet concrete but actually they just don't know about that so I try to make a point of it on most of my videos but I don't I don't talk about it on every single video Oh, Darren's screeding in behind those pipes. The orange pipes, again, are where the radiant heat is going to come up into the boiler in their utility room. And then the white pipes, probably, you know, a bathroom's going to be in there, a sink, kitchen, all that stuff. They don't really tell us all that stuff. All I know is, you know, we, we get a phone call or a text and say, the floor is ready. You know, when can you pour it? So... <laughs> And we get multiple ones of those every day. You know, we get a lot of them from this foundation contractor. We're usually about 20 floors on the list just for this one contractor right here at all times. Uh, they typically text us, you know, five to ten new jobs every single week. So it's it, they're a pretty good contractor to work for. Now we'll leave. What we'll do is we'll get this poured. And we'll leave one guy, either Darren or Luke, here to finish power trial this, both floors. And then the two of us will go end up either pouring something else or getting something else ready 
for the next day or the next couple days. Whatever we got to do to stay ahead of the ball game here, that's typically what we do. And you know, it wouldn't matter. Any of the three of us could stay and finish this and get a good power trial finish on it pretty easily. We're all really, really experienced finishers, so that's not really an issue. I think total, this thing was it's 14 and a half yards. And I believe it was around 1,100, 1,200 square feet, something like that in total. This is actually a really nice spot on the lake. It's hard to tell from this angle right here, but we're kind of in a cove right here. It's a big, big lake, and it's, it's a really nice area. There's a golf course. There's a golf course just up the road. Like, literally, you could walk to the golf course from here. So it's a pretty cool spot. Yeah, we got a little bit too much in there for Luke, but we, we did want to empty that first truck out because there's not much room in here. We can only get one truck in here at a time, and the second truck's out there sitting waiting for us to do the garage. So we want to just empty out Brian and get get Matt in here, who is uh, you know the guy you saw at the beginning of the video, Matt. He actually drives the conveyor truck. We won't be using the conveyor today, but he's the conveyor driver for this company. We, we tend to get these two drivers quite a bit, Brian and Matt. They're, they're two of their more experienced drivers, and, you know, there's not really anything we need to tell them what to do. They just show up. They get it mixed up to the slump we like. They can kind of read our minds because they've poured for us so much. They know when we want to lift the chute, drop the chute, move the chute, start the concrete, and stop the concrete. So that makes our jobs a heck of a lot easier. We don't have too many of the front dumps in the area that we pour a lot of there are there are a lot of companies that have front dumps in Maine just the two companies we use the most this being one of them don't have any <laughs> well at least don't have any in our area this company actually has some but they're about an hour away so we tend to get mostly rear dumps on a lot of our pours and that I don't know we're just so used to it it doesn't bother us a bit really This garage was about 22 by 20. We did slope it a little bit from the back towards the front also, even though, you know, when you got heat in the floor and the heat is on, any water that drips off the car, whether it's rain water or ice or snow in the winter, it usually, you know, it gets onto that concrete with the heat and it usually evaporates pretty quickly. So it's, puddling isn't usually an issue when you got radiant heat in the floor. We're going to get most of this poured out, as you can see, before we start screeding. We we like pouring that way. We like getting most of the concrete. It really doesn't take us long to screed the concrete. It's it's actually takes a little bit longer to get just getting it poured out and getting it somewhat in place. And then we go around. We set all our grades, you know, on the on the perimeter. We usually have a chalk line snap so we can mag right to the chalk line. Where we don't, we'll shoot a pad just like I did there. And when, when the pad's right to the grade we need, we'll put a little X on it so we, no one, you know, will step in it knowing it's right on grade. And then we'll screed a little wet pad like we're doing right here. This is pretty typical, pretty typical screeding for us. And a lot of times, if you've seen some of my other videos, we do use a, a battery powered vibrating screed from MBW called the Screed Demon on a lot of our floors. But sometimes on the ones that are sloped, we'll just screed it by hand like this. This is called kick screeding. Though we just kick our feet as we screed and we don't have to stop. And it's it's pretty fast. It's probably just about as fast as using the battery screed, honestly. Just for most of the screeds we do, usually anything 10 feet or longer for a screed, we'll put two guys on it. And then if it's under 10 feet, you know, just one guy will, will screed. I was taught how to screed like this. I was 15 years old. That was 42 years ago. So I've been, I've been bending over screeding like this for a really, really long time. Haven't had too many back issues really over the years. I mean, my back has gone out and I've gone to a chiropractor and he's fixed it. But for the most part, it hasn't really been too, too bad. Luke and Darren are going to finish up the garage area right here. They're going to check. They, they usually run that screed across the whole garage door to make sure it's nice and level. And then uh, 
Luke's just getting off any excess right there. He'll mag float that out. Then Darren's going to go grab the bull float and come over here and bull float this. This stuff really, you know, at this slump, it bull floats really, really nice. And that's another reason why we like to pour a little bit looser slump. We had one little part of that 2x12 that kicked out. So Luke and I are just kind of kicking it back in about quarter to three eighths of an inch we like that we like it staying really really straight there where the doors are and i'm sure you guys do too so what that that caused the concrete just to bulge up a little bit so we just clean that up a little bit darren's going to finish it off here with the bull float and then we'll get everything washed up me and luke are going to take off we're going to leave darren here to finish uh, that's not on this video that'd be on another video but anyway guys i you know, I really appreciate you guys watching, tuning in, and, you know, leave Matt a little comment if you'd like about his dog. T check out these video, this video right here that's popping up, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.